Today, I'm going to be talking with the founder of one of the biggest Shopify apps in the market, AutoDS. Now, this app has been a game changer in the e-commerce industry, allowing online entrepreneurs to be able to find products and supply products to generate five, six, and even seven figures. Now, the founder of AutoDS I'll be talking with today has over 14 years, 14 years in the e-commerce, dropshipping, and the development space. And all of that time, effort, and energy that he's put into e-commerce and dropshipping He's put completely into this app, allowing it to be one of the most lucrative apps that you need to have on your Shopify store. To now scaling to over 130 employees, over 100,000 monthly users, and taking this app from nothing to something, this is the story that we're going to be uncovering today. I'm super excited to bring him in here, talking about the ins and outs of the AutoDS tool, where dropshipping is going to be in 2024, and what you guys need to be able to do to replicate the same success as an entrepreneur. I'm going to go ahead and bring him in, and I'll see you guys on the inside. What's going on, my boy? Hey, brother. Happy to have you out here. How uh, how long was the flight? Where are you from? I'm from Israel. The flight was 22 hours. 22 hours long. If you guys do not know, we are out here in Vegas. Shopify invited both of us out here. So we had to get together, do a podcast, and go ahead and bring the value and the truth to you guys. So talk to me a little bit about AutoDS, man. What got you started in it? What was your initiative in getting started? Run us up on the background. Sure. So first, I'm excited to be here. Uh, finally, happy to do this conversation with you. Um, so AutoDS established as a software for myself. So I'm a dropshipper for 14 years. And I had to create a software that will just sell for me automatically to make some extra income for myself. And yeah, that's how AutoDS established. We had a lot of like up and downs on the way that we can talk about later, but it started as a dropshipping software just to automate my own businesses. So 14 years, 14 years dropshipping. You know, dropshipping has really been going crazy the last couple of years. What even got you started in dropshipping in the first place? What interested you in it? So I didn't even know that that's the name of what I'm doing, <laughs> that it's called dropshipping. But I was looking to buy a Chinese cell phone online on a site called tinydeal.com. Now this site already doesn't exist anymore. But I saw the same phone on eBay, which is the site that I preferred to buy from uh, for more expensive price, like $40 more than what I saw on the Chinese site. So I said, okay, something is going on here. <laughs> like, why, why is the same picture title? Uh, item specifics, like everything was exactly the same on eBay as on this Chinese site. So what I did is that I just done the same. I just <laughs> copied the product from tinydeal.com to eBay and I got my first sale within uh, like four hours for $40 in profit. <laughs> so that's how I started with dropshipping. After that, I had like a business where I sold e-cigarettes in Israel. Uh, part of it was dropshipping, part of it was actual stock that I had in my parents' house, <laughs> um, and that's how I got into e-commerce in general. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. I mean, 14 years ago, again, dropshipping is in a completely different place than it was back then. What would you say are like some of the biggest things that are different from when you started versus now? Oh, wow. It, it always changes. Yeah. Like, back then it was eBay, like the most popular <laughs> dropshipping site. Now it's, of course, Shopify, most of the opportunities there, but also all like the marketing strategies are changing, the type of products are changing, like the uh, methods, how you do your product research is changing. Like everything is always changing. It always involves more, more automations today, more knowledge about uh, this uh, domain, also from people like you who share all this knowledge with the students and on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, so a lot changed. It always changes, <laughs> but it's always there and people really make profit with it. So talking about always changing, right? Dropshipping has always changed. I started this back in 2018. Dropshipping is completely different than where it was even back then. And with it being different, we had to evolve. Like, I remember when I first started my Shopify store, you could go out there and sell basically any product off of any ad, and it would always work for you. Now it's a little different. You have to do competitive analysis, you have to really understand your product, you have to understand the margins, the marketing strategy is different. So that same concept of, you know, dropshipping changing so much, how has this changed the AutoDS tool from the very beginning? Like AutoDS started as a dropshipping software for eBay only. Then we added dropshipping to Shopify. Initially, it was only from suppliers like AliExpress, for example. Then we understood that the quality of the products and the quality of the service and the shipping time from AliExpress isn't good enough for like to maintain a good dropshipping business for the long term. 
So we had to involve and add more private suppliers to AutoDS or add sourcing option for AutoDS. Then we saw, okay, we have a lot of beginners on AutoDS who don't know how to find their first product. So that's why we had to add our product finding hub. So that's how AutoDS involves always with the market because we listen to the audience, we listen to our uh, members, and we see what they need to take their dropshipping businesses to the next level. And that's how we improve our own software. I love that, man. I love that. AutoDS, the number one Shopify tool in the market. Be number one, right? You are at the very top. You have prey on demand. You have um, product research. You have supply. And you have all these great features of AutoDS all in one space. So how were you able to take over that market share? You started just this app just like anybody else. How were you able to open into a market like Shopify and completely take over? Yeah, so first, thank you. And, yeah. and basically, I, I believe that it started not from the software. It started from myself as a manager and as a CEO. So I always had to do a lot of personal development to improve myself. And then it also affected on the business and took the business to the next level. Um, the main things that we've done as a company to keep improving is that we spent all the money that we got back to the business to keep improving the business, to keep listening to the to our customers. Um, and I believe that that's what really differentiates us from any other company in the market. Like we started with eBay dropshipping, we dominated this market uh, this year. Like Last year already, we acquired our largest competitor there. Then we went to Shopify. We became the largest dropshipping software for Shopify. Now we went to print on demand. We will do the same there. And why? Because we always keep listening to our customers. We always keep improving the software. We saw competitors that they had a nice software that was good five years ago, but the software is the exact same software from the past five years. So. Yeah, so that's that's the main differential. I like that. So I want you guys to listen to what he said. He said he reinvested his profits, but more importantly, kept listening to what the consumers wanted. Now, this is something I do every single day with my business. If anything, if I had to attest to anything of why I got so much success with dropshipping when I first started is because I wasn't so worried about taking a profit. I was more worried about growing a legitimate business. So every night when I'm running ads, I'm reinvesting 30, 50 percent back into the business. When I'm looking at customer emails and I'm looking at Facebook comments and, and the comments on my ads and hearing what people are saying, all I did was just make my ads around what they wanted. So how important is it to listen to the consumers? How important is it to reinvest in your business? And you guys now are like at 100 plus employees. So the growth came very quickly. So how are you able to manage all of that? Yeah, so look, first, customer like user experience or customer experience in general is the most important thing for any business. Like we are working together for like over two years, I think, something like that. And if we wouldn't listen to your students, your audience, and keep involving the software and keep improving it for them, we couldn't maintain this good relationship for your uh, audience. In terms of how we manage over 100 employees, especially that I didn't come with any uh, business management background or you know family or, or connections or someone who could really guide me, how to do that? I really had to take one, a lot of coaches. So a lot of people who guided me how to solve a specific problem, how to take this department to the next level, how to, uh, for example, how to work on a better product. So I didn't have any experience with it. So we took a consultant. I didn't have any experience with how to structure the right marketing team. So we took a consultant for, for that. So that's the first part of it, the consultants. The second part is a lot of personal development, as I said before, I read books, I watch videos about how to improve myself, I put KPIs for myself, like how we get from where we are at now to X, and then I say, okay, I see that I need to hire 10 more people, how we hire them, like who can help us to understand how to structure this team in the right way. And that's how we kind of getting a shortcut to... Like so this uh, improvement. So data dri driven decision making, not really too much opinionated decision making. Yeah, we also like we work with our in our company with a system called OKRs, for example, which is every quarter we put goals for the next quarter, and then we 
split these uh, goals and every two weeks we check, okay, we wanted to get from X to Y, where we stand now, like what percentage of this uh, is already done. And that's the only way to improve. I know, love to it. Yeah. KPIs. That's what we do at Supreme Ecom as well. I mean, every single person who works at Supreme has KPIs, measuring the productivity, measuring the effectiveness of what they're doing. And without data decision making, you find yourself opinionated, which could just lead you down a rabbit hole, you know? So really glad that you brought that up. So now, you know, we're 2024, you know, auto DS is when you go to the Shopify store or you type in the app store tools you need, it's going to pop up every single time. So how were you able to get such big market share? You know, how were you able to come into a non-existing space and create something from nothing? First, we started by what already exists and people need. So initially it was just product import from AliExpress. Then it was like, okay, let's also fulfill the orders automatically. Let's do product research. And each of these things, it's actual company. Like yeah. we basically went to more and more markets and just competed with more and more companies. Not because we just wanted to compete with more companies, but because we saw that that's what our users need. Um, and except of that, we also keep working with people like you who educate new people who want to get into the market and then we yeah we work with them together to create a market of dropshippers who can really make extra income from that yeah i definitely agree we've had a good relationship it's been about like two years now working together um last year we were in new york together at the shopify convention it was great there was a lot of other people out there and i just remember that conversation we were sitting there talking we ended up getting dinner you know they showed me a lot of love when we were out in new york and from that conversation, just that night, I mean, I was just like giving my opinion on different things that could change AutoDS. I was like, maybe we should add some Facebook product research into it or, hey, print on demand is coming in the next couple of years. Let's really try to start pushing towards that. And you were able to take my opinions and some of the things that I really thought were really important and executing it. And it takes a team of developers to do it. So how are you able to produce so quickly and keep adding on to the tool that you have where other people are taking two, three, four years to be able to do these type of things. Yeah, so first, opinion from someone like you who see a lot of students and knows like the opinion of many different dropshippers, it's very important for us. So that's about like why we really move very fast with these things. But as a company technology, like both me and my business partner, Michael, who is our technology lead, um, we came from very tech heavy um, history. So basically both of us, we were developers, in the technology unit of Israel. So both of us, we were like very geeky tech <laughs> guys. And so that's also something that's very different between us and any other company. Like most of company owners came from marketing experience. We came from dropshipping plus the uh, development experience. So we knew how to structure the right teams. Uh, Michael already came from another company where he was the technology lead there so he already knew how to structure the team in the right way just just an example we know we know the exact roles that need to be in a, in the right development team we know how to create the processes we know how to measure them so that's what really helps us to move fast in addition to that we have now over 40 developers Whew. so just over like these 40 people are more than the size of most of our competitors uh, like the entire companies and this really helps us to move very fast there. So who are your competitors currently right now? And who and what would you say is the reason why you know you're always going to beat them every time? So we have different competitors in different markets. It really depends. But for example, for suppliers, we have like CJ Dropshipping, uh, where we support them also as an option on AutoDS and we have other suppliers. Uh, for product research, we have other tools like, for example, Minea, but they do only the product research part while we do everything. So we are trying to be like an ecosystem, kind of what Apple is doing, where they everything connects together. And this also gives us a big advantage there. Huge advantage, huge advantage. I mean, if you've never been on the AutoDS tool, once you do log in, you'll see a winning product section, marketplace section, TikTok spy, suppliers, print on demand. The list goes on and on and on. And I remember when I first started dropshipping, Oberlo was the biggest thing. You know, like it was the only thing that you could do to find products and import it to your store. So you took a market that was basically coming to an end, right? Because when did Oberlo finish? It was like 2020, basically. Yeah. 
were you knowing that that was going to happen? And then how were you able to be ready for it with AutoDS to know this was your time to really start taking over? Yeah, so we, we saw so many companies that died during like our seven years in the market. We always saw companies that starting and then disappearing. And you can see our similar web that shows basically the traffic to our site that just growing month over month for, we never had like a, a decline there. Um, and so, so this shows me that First, we are doing something right. You can see our Trustpilot Shopify App Store, 4.8 stars, over 6,000 reviews on each of them. Um, so people like what we do, and this gives us a lot of confidence. Also, we always check with our users what they want. We, You can see sometimes on the system that we show surveys to our users about uh, what do you think about this feature, and then we just listening to like we are writing and analyzing everything that they write there and then we improve the software so yeah and about Oberlo when Oberlo closed Shopify migrated all the users to another company to DSLs yeah and then we said okay so giant like Shopify is now with DSLs together and like what should we do now but then we understood okay but they are doing like something very tiny like it just Dropshipping from uh, AliExpress to Shopify, that's it. Uh, AutoDS is a platform. We have so many other things. So everyone who wants to go deep with dropshipping or still trying to figure out exactly what they need, they will go to AutoDS anyway. So we understood that Shopify is there. They are working with DSLs, but it wasn't like really a problem for us. We understood that it will be okay. We already faced this type of problems. When we just started, we already had competitors that had money had teams like already had like over 15 employees, one of them. And yeah, and and we beat them too. So and and you can see that time passed and we became still the largest for uh, Shopify dropshipping too. hundred percent. I definitely agree. And you know, dropshipping like, as as mentioned, it, it's it's came a long way from from the very beginning. You know, this is something that I know for a fact for the whole future of dropshipping, as long as people are buying online, this business and this model and everything is going to continue to keep growing. Where do you see the future of dropshipping going, going to be at? So that's one of the most unique things, I think, to our market. Like every year you think, okay, what will happen next year? And then every year you can see that it just becomes better <laughs> because we get more knowledge about how to do things. Where I see it going, I see that going one to uh, multi-channel in the long term. I believe that uh, this will be part of, uh, of dropshipping. Brand building, so no like shitty product that you sell one time and then get chargebacks or unhappy customers. So more caring about the people who buy from you. So if it's, for example, we repackage every product that we send from our warehouse just to hide that it came from you know a random supplier. So we really try to brand each package to put thank you card to really help our users to create their brand. And that's where I see dropshipping is going, that people need to care more about what they sell, how they sell, what service they provide. Um, but if you care about these things and you do that right, so sky's the limit there. 100%. Uh, if you don't, you will get burned very fast and your business will get closed. Quality over quantity. And I, this is the reason why I see so many people not succeeding with dropshipping. They go out there, they try to find an ad that's already working in the market. They try to repost it on their own on their own ad marketing and they end up in a position where they have ad fatigue and nothing works for them. Or they're selling products that they did not validate that don't have good quality behind them. And then they all find out and they sit there in a position like, oh, dropshipping is dead. It's like dropshipping is not dead. You just didn't put in the effort. So I agree with you. You know, I think in 2024, dropshipping, branding, white labeling, giving a good customer experience, being able to ensure that you're giving great delivery, right? This is something I think a lot of people need to start listening and putting more effort into. It's not just sitting there selling cheap products anymore. You have to sell something that has value and you have to sell something that can solve a purpose for somebody's life. But more importantly, you have to be able to compete with these fast shipping methods out here like Amazon and these other big companies. And this is something I feel like AutoDS really, really put effort into. 
So talk to me a little bit about how the shipping works with AutoDS and talk to me a little bit about how important that was for you guys to be able to compete in the market. One one second before that, I want to add also to what you just said. One thing that I also see that differentiate successful dropshippers from the ones who fail is consistency. Like sure. we, we, we all know that dropshipping isn't the most complicated business in the world. You don't need high budget. You don't need a lot of knowledge. You need to start, get a good mentor, and succeed. So consistency is also what we see that really makes the big difference between successful dropshippers and uh, those who fail. 100%. 100%. And like I said, I really believe that the branding, the consistency, the day-in, day-in, out effort, right? Like I always say, you have to treat this business like a business. And I learned the hard way. And this is something why, to be real with you guys, I even started using AutoDS is, you know, like I mentioned, long shipping times, right? When I first started drop shipping, I was telling him the story last night. You know, I was selling this product. I ended up doing like $100,000 in sales when I had nothing to my name. And I was like, man, I made 20000 profit. This is crazy. And then like the next month, I end up losing like $12,000 of that profit because of chargebacks because 30, 60, 90 day shipping times. And I just wasn't putting the efforts into the quality and customer experience. So how are you guys able to compete against the CJ drop shippings, the Amazons? How are you guys able to keep the customer's experience as high quality as it is when people are using your platform? Yeah. So so what we did is that we created our own marketplace where suppliers can connect to AutoDS each supplier that connects to us, we vet them manually. So we have a team that's responsible only for making sure that the suppliers who connect to AutoDS bring in value. Now, value shouldn't be necessarily just price or shipping speed. It should be something. So the supplier uh, can bring us, for example, custom branding, fast shipping, higher product quality, higher service, uh, fast shipping. So. That's what our team is checking there. They check that the suppliers that connect to AutoDS really brings us something special, something unique. Sometimes we see suppliers that are trying to do drop shipping into AutoDS marketplace. Yeah. So <laughs> we just block them. But um, that's one part of one kind of suppliers that we have. The other thing is sourcing. So we have our own warehouse in China and we have sourcing team. What they do is that they go uh, and check quotes from different Chinese uh, manufacturers. Then they see that the product is in a good quality. They ship the product to our warehouse. They check the product again. They do like quality insurance, and then they ship it worldwide. There we really have good uh, like supply chain where we know how to optimize the shipping speed over what you see on AliExpress, for example. So. That's for shipping from China. So we need to separate it. We have the private suppliers who can be domestic suppliers in the US, two to five business days shipping, um, which is super fast. Or we have suppliers from China, which is still faster than AliExpress, but you have many other, pro like much higher var variety of products there. Yeah, and I need you guys to listen to what he's saying because this is exactly what the experience of being a dropshipper is like. When you first start dropshipping, you open up a Shopify store, you try to sell a product, and you might not be sitting at, you know, two to five days shipping. You might be delivering it from China. It could be 10, 20 days shipping, but you still figure out, okay, hey, a product is starting to work for me. And then from the product working for me, maybe I'm going to go out there and I'm going to brand the product next. So maybe I'm going to add a tag to it or I'm going to add my logo to it or some type of thing with the type of packaging. Oh, wow, this is doing really well for me. After a couple of months and really scaling this up, you then go to white labeling, right? So then you're now shipping products over to United States. You're getting two to five days shipping and you're able to create a legitimate brand. And I think this is why you guys are able to separate yourself from a lot of others is because not are you just an all-in-one tool, but you're kind of the all-in-one experience that you need to be from a dropshipper to a brand owner. So how many times or how many different people have you guys seen come in basically without any experience, just selling products to then finding themselves in a position of branding, white labeling, running a whole entire business? How are you guys able to move somebody through that entire customer journey? Yeah, so it happens a lot. Like most of our customers starting as beginners, they joined AutoDS, they find the first product with us, they import it from AliExpress, they get some sales, then they say, okay, I need to improve something. They ask us for a quote, okay, give me a quote for uh, faster shipping for this product. 
we give them the quote. Sometimes it's cheaper than AliExpress, sometimes it's not, but it always allows them to create their own brand with better quality as we uh, discussed. And then they say, okay, I'm already at a high scale. I'm getting like 20 orders a day. Uh, can you give me a better quote? Then we actually stock the products for them in our warehouse because we know that th we will get from them 20 daily orders. So we don't need to ship each time from the manufacturer to our warehouse. We already put the products in the warehouse and then it's much faster. And this is without them buying any inventory yeah. up front. Yeah, without them buying, we just know that, okay, this user is already processing with us like for a month, 20 orders a day. Let's just order it to our warehouse. We take the risk. And yeah, so that's the next step. When this works, some of them are coming to us and say, hey, now I want to buy a stock and put it in US warehouse and then I want to ship it from there. And then also they can buy a big stock and decrease their pricing or we can stock it for them on our own expenses and then it will be a bit more expensive for them. <laughs> uh, but dropshippers really do all this journey with us. They start for product research, getting their first sale, in the very beginning. Sales. <laughs> yeah, and, and this is like a very exciting thing because in the beginning it was just AliExpress and we saw that users are joining to AutoDS, starting dropshipping from AliExpress, getting few sales and then they, they churn and we are like, where they go? <laughs> <laughs> and we understood that they are going to our competitors who allowed these dropshippers to level up, to go to the next level and to brand the products to get faster shipping. And this is why we said, okay, we need to have our own warehouse now in China. And that's how we leveled up for this type of dropshippers too. I love that, man. I love that. So uh, obviously the dropshipping space, you were mentioning it earlier, the education, the people who are really making a difference out there are driving a lot of people to AutoDS, but also just driving a lot of people to start dropshipping. And I'm one of those people, right? So, you know, I started, you know, this whole entire YouTube channel, started everything I did about education based off of my experience of scaling it multiple different brands and e-commerce businesses. So my question for you is why were you interested in working with me over other people? And, you know, what a lot, what separated me from other people? So that, that's a great question. So first, we, we talked about it yesterday. That to me, it was very impressive to see how much you care about your students. So when we just started to work together, we had um, miscommunication about something that you offer to your students, and we thought that it should be different. And then we adapted it because you really cared about the experience for your users. You have the mentors that really know what they do, and to us, it was really exp really exciting to work with a brand like yours who really cares about the success of their students and not just to push a lot of students, selling them something and forget about them. Yeah. So we see the consistent communication between you and your students, like your mentors and your students. Um, and we like to work with professionals. So, yeah. You know. I like that, man. I like that. I mean, for me, it's always been about just quality over quantity. Even not just with working direct, directly with you, but like even for my mentorship, right? I'm not here to take on 40, 60, 80, 100 people a month. I focus on taking only 10 max so I can give them a good experience, give them what they're looking for, tailor everything to their needs and excel them into the direction that they're wanting to be in. But it comes down to giving them a foundation of tools that can work for them, give them a foundation of giving them, you know, things that we know work based off our own experiences. And it's really easy to do it with AutoDS because not are you guys just working and listening to me, but, you know, I'm working and listening to you as well. And it's made this experience very easy. You know, I'll give you guys an example. If you go look at, you know, AutoDS last year and you go look at the features of where it's at this year, it's completely different. And you're constantly adapting and changing the model of what you're doing. So I want to say big kudos to that. But adaptability, right? This is probably the biggest thing that goes into to being an entrepreneur. How important is that for you? And how are you able to constantly stay ahead of what's supposed to be next? I think it's really one of the most important things for an entrepreneur. So these competitors that already not in the market, they just didn't adapt. Like they didn't listen to their uh, like customers. And I believe that being flexible as a business owner, it's critical. For example, if we take it to dropshipping, so you're testing a product, it doesn't work. It doesn't mean that you need to close your business and go home. It just means that you need to test the next product. You need to adapt 
maybe you did something wrong. You need to write for yourself, okay, what did I do wrong with these campaigns or with this product that I can improve for the next one to become a better dropshipper, to become a better entrepreneur. And that's something that first to me personally, if I take it out of the ass, I always trying to analyze myself. So our employees, like many of them heard myself coming and saying, I see that I did a mistake there. Let's see how we improve it for the next time. So not giving up. Yeah. Not giving up, sitting there figuring out you made a mistake and using that as a learning lesson, right? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. You have to make mistakes. Like exactly. We, we, we cannot be always right. Otherwise, we can't improve. So, um, yeah, so adaptability is, is one of the most important things there, especially with our market. So sometimes you see that, okay, like, Five years ago, you could run a Facebook campaign for shitty product, $5, and <laughs> get positive ROI. Today, yeah. no way you do that. Um, and you need to adapt. So you work with high-ticket products, for example, and that's part, part of the game. You just need to, to adapt mm -hmm. yourself. So one thing you mentioned earlier was basically omni-channel marketing, sitting there, being able to diversify your marketing on multiple platforms. Where do you believe this is going to take us in the future with dropshipping? And do you feel like AutoDS is ready for that? Yeah, I believe that uh, for the long term, and we already see that today, 10% of our customers are selling not just on Shopify. Um, they sell on multiple selling channels. And they market not on only on TikTok or only on Facebook. They do that like omni-channel. For AutoDS, four years ago or three years ago, something like that, we rewrote the entire system only to support this multi-channel dropshipping. So today you can connect multiple stores to AutoDS. It can be one on eBay, one on Etsy, one on Shopify. So let's say you are selling a print-on-demand T-shirt on Shopify. There is no reason not to send the same product also on Etsy, for example. 100%. And then you increase your ROI. So AutoDS is already adapted for that. And to me, I believe that that's the future. I believe that that's where e-commerce is going, people will send not only on Shopify, it will be Shopify, TikTok uh, shops, Etsy, Amazon, so everyone and his preferences and uh, type of products. But yeah, I believe the dropshipping will go to this uh, omnichannel approach. I agree with it too. I agree with it. I mean, most of the time, I mean, I did it with one of my brands, right? With uh, the brand Kush Cloud. I took it from the Shopify store. I ended up getting the private supplier branding, white labeling, created the whole brand from it. And then I went to Amazon. I was like, I can just sell it. I already own the inventory. I could just go put it right on Amazon. And what's going to be the difference? Only the, the storefront's the same. The product is the same. Nothing's going to change. It just gives me another opportunity to sell even more of my product. And it came down to giving myself the opportunity of just really listening to people. Like you said, I think that really big businesses come from listening to people. And I want you guys to listen to what I'm going to say to you guys right now. I sold this seat cushion for $495,000. My second month selling it, the first month, $10,000 in sales. What was the biggest difference is the angle and changing and listening to my consumers. So with his business, with dropshipping, with entrepreneurship, you have to constantly listen. And the only thing that was different between my first month and second month selling that product was I read the competitor's product, uh, competitor's comment section of their ad. And everybody in there was like, hey, I'm 50, 60 years old. My back hurts. Can I use this product? Hey, I'm in a retirement home. Would this be good for me? And I was like, man, the people in this ad of this person is like 25 years old, 30 years old. So what if I just sold the exact same product and gave the same features and benefits, but I just changed the angle to an older audience because I just listened to the consumers. I just read the comment section. That alone was one of the biggest differences with me selling this product. So what type of things are you guys utilizing at AutoDS to constantly get feedback? Is it surveys? You know, how frequent are the surveys? How do you guys constantly get the feedback that you need so that you are in the position to keep adapting? Yeah, so three things. The first one is review sites. So if we get a review on Trustpilot, for example, it doesn't mean that we even just go and try to talk to customer and delete this review, which is uh, like a practice that some businesses are doing. We will first analyze and understand why this user wrote this review, because it's much more important than just you know trying to remove this review or something like that. We will try to understand why they wrote it even if it's negative yeah of even course that, that, that's yeah that that's the good part of it like yeah. this negative review will help us to improve 
So we will not get this negative review yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing that we are doing consistently. Like we have actually someone who is full time just on analyzing uh, data uh, on AutoDS. Second thing that we are doing is left survey. And when someone leaves AutoDS, we ask them a question, hey, uh, why you leave? So I stopped dropshipping. Okay, you stopped dropshipping. Why? What could help you to succeed with dropshipping? Um, or something something didn't work with me on the tool. So we will ask them what didn't work for you. And then we analyze all these answers. And, and uh, yeah, and then we improve the product for that. And the third thing is like from our side where we contact our users and we are asking them what work or what didn't work for you. For example, when someone imports their first product, we will ask them, sometimes it depends on their period, but we will ask them, how was your experience with your first import? And then we can say, we can see, okay, it was slow. It was, I don't know, like we can an analyze the answers. For example, we saw a common feedback that people wrote that they couldn't find supplier with shipping to their country. Okay, so for example, a lot of Brazilian people who came to AutoDS couldn't find products that ship to Brazil. So we added a category on our marketplace, worldwide shipping, and now this type Boom. of feedback <laughs> disappeared. <laughs> yeah. And now we see much more people from countries that never worked with AutoDS. Why? Because we are listening to them. And yeah, so these are the methods how we get the, the reviews. So it's worldwide. Feedback. So basically anybody who wants to start dropshipping, anybody who wants to be a, like able to source and supply products, you guys are able to ship worldwide right now. Yeah. Okay, awesome, awesome. The thing yeah. is that even before we could ship, but the user experience wasn't there to show them that you have this worldwide option. And that's that's a big difference. For example, for winning products, we have today products with an option for uh, Facebook ads, but you don't have a filter for that. So now we are working on adding an option to find all the products with Facebook campaigns. So then people who want to sell on Facebook can find it because we got a feedback of, you don't have products with Facebook ads, but we do have, it's just not with a good user experience. Yeah, And you can understand it only from reading what people are saying yeah, or actually to talk to people. I definitely, definitely, definitely agree with that. And I mean, it's going into the direction of, like you said, omni-channel marketing. If you're able to see ads on Facebook, ads on TikTok, ads on Pinterest, all for one product, you're going to understand the different marketing angles to be able to do it. So, you know, my next question is, you know, you are really putting a lot of effort into the winning product section, as well as the marketplace, the TikTok spy. You guys are constantly updating with new products on a day-to-day -day basis. We all know that the foundation of dropshipping comes with having a winning product, and you guys put a lot of effort into that. So how are you able to find winning products for people on a day-to-day -day basis? How are you able to get a good amount of competitor analysis on the product so that they know the direction and who the competitors are? How important was that for AutoDS and how are you guys able to really put a lot of effort into it to get to the point where it's at now? It was super important, again, because we ran this survey and we saw that most of people are coming actually to find what to sell because they are just starting. And then we really focused a lot on improving it. Um, last year, in 2023, we focused just on expansion. So we expanded for sourcing, print on demand, product finding. This year, we go really deep into how to improve what we already have on AutoDS. So if we focus on product finding, um, we have multiple systems. The first one is something that scans all TikTok shops, getting, we scan like over 100 uh, products, 100,000 products a day <laughs> from TikTok shops. 100,000. <laughs> yeah. And then, you, and then we analyze these products and we keep their information from different channels like Shopify, like AliExpress, like TikTok, Facebook. We keep all this huge information in our da database and we will show users the trend of sales so you can understand, okay, now it's Christmas, what products are working well for Christmas. We save the countries. So if it's Shopify, we know how to understand to what countries this product uh, sells and then we will show, okay, for example, this one will sell 40% to US, 30% to Canada. The, these are the audience. Um, we show the ads. So we show TikTok, Facebook. We For now, we're just analyzing all the network. And we are spending tens of thousands of dollars a month just to scan the network and find 
more and more products and then in the back end we also analyze it so we scan tiktok for ebay users we scan ebay today and uh, we scan facebook we scan google <laughs> and like google shopping um and yeah so that that's how we get this huge database so basically like you are giving almost all the information that you need about a product right on your guys's system so it's really not like an excuse for people to not be able to sell this product or at least know the competitive angle to go after because you give it all yeah a- a- another cool thing is that our marketplace uh, it has currently over 50 million products there Whew. and all Oof. these products are sorted by demand so because we have over 100k active dropshippers on AutoDS you can we can know what works for people not only from our users which usually we prefer not to work with their data but from dropshippers worldwide because we analyze all Shopify stores and then we sort our marketplace by demand for products so for example if now it's uh, Christmas, you will see more Christmas products at the top of the market. definitely see that a lot. Yeah, Halloween, yeah. it's like all Halloween products. Valentine's Day, I was just doing product research literally last week uh, on this video right here on my live Q&A. <laughs> but um, yeah, I went to the marketplace section, Rose Bear, like, like the Crystal Rose Heart, like a lot of Valentine's Day products. So is it constantly being updated with the seasons and trends that are, are currently working in the market as well? Yeah, so we have like a wait for products and then we have like machine learning that learns like AI that learns and sees what works like what what should be at the top now like, by the rating um, sometimes it takes some time to for the system to understand that okay we passed this holiday yeah or this season uh, but yes it analyzed by the by the data it, everything in general, I, Autodesk is 100% data-driven company. I love it. I um, love it. And I think that's honestly why it makes a lot of sense for myself as well as my students is because, especially with your beginner dropshipping, the easiest way to jump into any industry is where there's low barriers to entry. The easiest time where there's low barriers to entry is when there's not a season or trend that has started yet. For example, right now, I know that if you're starting dropshipping, you should start focusing on the spring season, Mother's Day, Father's Day. These are all big seasons and trends spring that are coming in the next couple months. And we utilize trends like Google Trends to find this. You know, we can see from the very bottom of when a trend is going to start to the very end of when a trend is going to start or end. And on AutoDS, it basically matches that. So are you guys able to utilize Google Trends with this as well when it comes to understanding what type of products and when to push it? Yeah, 100%. Like part of what you will see soon uh, or maybe when this episode will be released, already see, but somewhere in uh, 2024, is you will see a graph of the trend of the product Oof. and it also helps us to understand the countries because we check the trend by countries too Ooh, I uh, love that. so it's pretty huge yeah that's going to be really really big because i mean at that point like he said you're not giving any opinions it's more data distri- uh, data decision making based off of what's already worked in the past and the season of trends that show that they work every single year so you know what is 2024 going to look like with auto ds you said you're going to be focusing more on quality this year where are you guys going to be putting the most amount of your efforts yeah so 23 we released uh, print on demand sourcing and product finding that's where we will go like all in and uh, we are going to be number one uh, product finding software uh, in anything you check like TikTok spy, Facebook spy, winning products, everything. Uh, we keep focusing on improving our sourcing. So today we give quotes within like 24 hours and we want to make it almost immediate. And uh, like we are working on technology there that it will not rely on human power anymore. And then we will be able to give the quotes much faster. Print on demand, we released it and we want to expand our in- amount of products but also to allow allow like AI designs, to allow uh, people to create more complicated designs. For example, shoes, you need to understand, okay, h- how I design it, it's more complicated because it's not just one logo here or something yeah. like that. So also something that we are going deep there. So these three okay. niches, print on demand, product finding, and uh, sourcing, which will be improved a lot this year. That's awesome. That's awesome. I want, and I want to talk a little bit about AI for a second because this is another big thing that probably happened, not just for AutoDS, but for the world in 2023. And from, for example, if you are not using AI with your Shopify dropshipping store, 
you are just missing out. I mean, the opportunity to start a business using AI now gives you the opportunity to not basically have any excuse. It can write you a product page. It can write you ad copy. It can even produce you video content and more. How are you guys able to utilize AI with AutoDS last year? And how much has this been, you know, effective for you and your business? Yeah, so first, because of you, uh, today I didn't sleep as much as I could. <laughs> Why? Because yesterday you showed me how you manage your um, day-to-day with the uh, ChatGPT, like, and how you utilize AI for your business. So I downloaded the app and bought the premium version. There. Have to, have to, have to. <laughs> and that's really helpful. So I'm a big believer of, you know, time, uh, like, optimization. And this why last year we released AI optimization for description, titles on AutoDS. And now with the click of a button, you can ask our AI to uh, rewrite for you the title, the description, and it makes your product look more unique than any other competitor without spending too much time. And uh, we will work also on images optimization. So it will look different than any other competitor, even that it's the exact same product. Why? Because even if you upload it from AliExpress in the beginning, so we will be able to optimize your pictures with AI. Uh, so last year we added it for titles and description. We see people using that a lot. Yeah. Uh, it saves people so much time uh, and it's a game changer. Like that, that's an example of something that really involved in the last few years. So they literally give you the competitor analysis on AutoDS. You could just take it straight to ChatGPT put the competitor's website in there and say, I want to keep 80% of what's working for them and just add 20% of your own sauce to it, ChatGPT, and write me out a new product description. And you just have no excuse not to be able to make this work, but it comes down to utilizing your tools. It comes down to utilizing what's going to make your time more efficient. So, you know, with, with you putting so much effort into that last year, where do you see AI taking you, you know, in 2024 and forward? So first we use it a lot to understand what works in terms of product finding. Um, today, and uh, by the way, the team that works for us for the winning product section, we have a section where we show manually analyzed products. And it's like updated like every day, right? Yeah. Every single day you see new products. Every time you refresh the screen, if it's today or tomorrow, you're gonna see something new. Yeah, that's true. And we, th- the cool thing is that our team works for the winning product section, like for the manually picked products with our own tools. So they use our own TikTok spy to find uh, products and then they just verify it manually and push it to our winning product section. So it means that everyone can use this data to optimize uh, their product finding process. So how we use AI there is that AI also helps us to see what's the score I, I explained before about the scoring on our marketplace and how we sort the products. That's new, right? That's brand yeah. new, yeah. And with AI, we know what score we should give to products. We see what already worked from past history. We feed the AI with data, and then it uses this data to give dropshippers the next best sellers. So talk about that score a little bit, like how you're scoring products and how you're able to utilize that to understand the winning product behind it. Like what goes into this score of a winning product? So we see how many people imported this product to their stores and we scan all the network. We see, okay, 10 stores imported this product. How many of them got a sale? And then we understand, okay, maybe a lot of competition, but still everyone still sells this product. Like the conversion rate is good and then it will go up. So that's part of the algorithm. Uh, interest of dropshippers, like how many dropshippers will click on the marketplace and open this product. How many of them will import this product, which shows that they really like the quality of the description, the images. Uh, so each thing has its own uh, weight for the scoring. Part of the weight, for example, is shipping time. So if we see a product with good shipping time, we will rate it a bit higher because it's important. If we see a product with an option for custom branding, it will also get more weight. So that's how the algorithm works. And and AI really helps a lot there. Like we couldn't make that that efficient as we have it today without the technology and without AI. I love that, man. Yeah, I use it a little bit too much. I was showing him last night. I was on ChatGPT. Like anything that I'm trying to get done or have questions on, I'm just talking or, or typing right into it. So happy that you're able to download it. So, you know, AutoDS has over 100,000 monthly people who are utilizing your guys' tool. As an entrepreneur, when you first started, 
did you believe it was going to be at the level that it's at where it's at? And how were you able to keep yourself consistent? Because the journey probably wasn't perfect. It wasn't easy. It probably had a lots of lows and highs. How were you able to get to the point that you were at now? No, I didn't, I didn't know that it would get to this scale because Autodia started as a software for myself. And this is why I didn't expect it to get there. And the system wasn't built for that. Uh, I had to wake up for the first, it was a long period, like a year, every day, 3 a.m. Israel time. And I had like an alarm, like alarm clock. Mm. I woke up and I had to go open my computer, restart the, serv the servers and then go back to sleep. And then Michael came, uh, my business partner or CTO, and he said, Yo, what, what's going on? <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, yeah, what, what do you do? <laughs> and, and he didn't want to wake up every day at 3 a.m. because that's when we had, uh, by data, uh, less amount of users on our system. And we rewrote the entire system first to support the multi-channel, as, as we talked before, but also to support scaling amount of users. So only there I understood, okay, now I can really, like, we can really go to our goals that we have today, yeah. which is to go to IPO. Uh, but back then, no, we didn't <laughs> that think that it will get to this scale. And yeah. So for the people who are watching, you know, with yourself being an entrepreneur, how are you able to continue to keep overcoming these struggles? How are you able to outsource to, you know, the amount of staff that you have? I mean, how much staff do you have now? Uh, you have like 100, 100, 130 plus yeah. people. You know, how are you able to get to that point through the lows? Like, how are you able to keep pushing yourself when times were not easy? I'm a freak of like a big fan of self development. Uh, a lot of books I read every day. Uh, one of the things for me is that I was very impulsive, for example. So I started to meditate. Uh, I always tried to find, okay, what can make me become a better manager and a better business owner, entrepreneur. We established a lot of processes in our company to uh, make the base, to, to create a base for this scale. For example, Every employee who comes to Autodesk, we have a very structured process about how we onboard them, how we offboard them. We put very clear expectations with any new employee so we can really grow in a safe way. And it works everywhere. So it's good HR processes. It's good software development processes. For example, we work with a way where we plan each time. It's called sprints. Uh, we plan each time two weeks ahead, and then we analyze in the end, okay, what's done from what we planned, what didn't done, what, what haven't, haven't done. Um, and yeah, so a lot of processes, a lot of self-development and culture. I'm really happy that you said that self-development because this is something that's really big for me. I mean, I read a lot of books. I read a lot of information to continue to keep updating the knowledge that I have, but also I outsource and I look for mentors. Even at the level that I'm at right now, I still look for mentors because I know that knowledge is power and information is what's going to get me to the next level. And I believe that, you know, sometimes it can be hard to do self-development when you are constantly going. Because, you know, when you're first starting entrepreneurship, you are going, going, going. Like you don't even think about trying to do self-development. So when was that trigger moment for you to take a step back and really put in that effort into yourself? And how, how did that change everything for you? Yeah, so I listened to a podcast that said, okay, that not every manager is the right manager to manage 10 people, 20, 100, 1,000. Like, you should be a different type of manager for each uh, step. And I understood that, like, the company is crashing, okay? I, I, I'm not good enough today to manage all the at the level that I would like to have it. Like that, that, that was my thought back then. And I went to a mentor to, to check what, what should I do, what, what will be the next steps. Another thing is that it's all also the people that you surround yourself about yeah. around. And I made friends who are more similar to me, who are also entrepreneurs, to keep even brainstorming with them. Like what, what, what would be the next step? How can I improve? So you are who it, you surround yourself with. You yeah. are who you surround yourself with. And you hang out with six winners, you'll be the seventh. You'll be the hang out with six losers, you'll be the seventh. And you have to be very, very, very picky on who you surround yourself with. And honestly, if you don't want to be around other people because they're not providing value, 
you also have to find yourself alone at sometimes. So how are you able to decipher who was valuable enough for you to put your time into? It came also from the bottom. Like when you see that, okay, everything is crashing. Like I, I have to do something yeah. now. And that's where I understood, okay, I need to keep developing myself. And about people, I went to conferences uh, where I meet good people like you. And that's how you create the circle of people that you can really brainstorm with them. Yeah. Getting out of your comfort zone. I mean, Israel's nowhere close to Vegas, you know? Yeah. Like, so even coming out here, even at the level that you're at, you're still pushing till this day to network, meet other people, surround yourself around people in your industry. And I think that, honestly, this is a huge test to why you've been able to have so much success. I just saw you in New York. Like, we're now out here in Vegas. You're going to the affiliate world in Dubai. Like, you're constantly, constantly pushing in that effort to develop yourself and the people around you. And I think it's a huge, huge test to, like, who you are, honestly. Yeah, by the way, you will also see that you're becoming more productive when you know that, okay, I have this one, two hours a day that I need to spend on myself, on improving myself, and then your tasks will be still get done. Like, you will understand that when you have this time on your calendar to improve yourself, you will just get better on the processes for the other tasks. So clear yeah. mind, clear vision. It's funny because actually if I pull up my Google Calendar right now, every day, Monday through Friday, like between 8 and 9 a.m., that's my personal development time. Like I that's where it's for thing. me. Like for me, nobody talked to me, nobody hang out with me, nobody hit me up, my phone is off. Like this is my time for myself. Because when you're an entrepreneur or even as we both understand being a CEO, there's a lot on our shoulders. There's a lot of responsibility. There's a lot of things to get done. So that personal development time is something that a lot of people overlook. And I think it's very important that you guys understand that you have to put effort into yourself. Your business is only going to get out so far if you don't put in the effort towards yourself. So, you know, I'm really, really glad that you said that, man. And, you know, we're going to start wrapping things up, man. Dropshipping is a huge thing. 2024, the industry is going to continue to keep booming. And Auto DS and Supreme Ecom and the other people that are really the truth in the industry are going to continue to keep standing out. So... I just want to say, man, I really appreciate you being in here. I appreciate your time. And um, I'm excited to keep rolling uh, through with this partnership and continue to be the difference. We are just starting, brother. It will be a huge year and a huge future for dropshipping and for Supreme and uh, AutoDS. It definitely is. If you have not gone to Shopify App Store and you started dropshipping, make sure to go ahead and download that AutoDS tool. And if you guys need any more assistance, you guys can go ahead and reach out to us at Supreme Ecom. So hope you have a good day, my boy. And it was great seeing you. See you. They gon' want a piece when you got it like that Like Jake said, we gon' spend it, get it right back Stack that internet money till the site crash